X-ray pornography? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? I would like it. I always thought X-rays are really cool. Plus, they're set. They're they're inside you, man. <laughs> Sounds sexual to me. Now, granted, it takes a long time for that to happen. You know, like right now, our star is in the process of doing it. But over these huge ass distances and huge ass time scales, we don't see it. We just see the sun as a right, constant right. thing. But it's not. It's you got to think. There are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on the earth. So there's a shitload of these things. Just all over the universe. It's like somebody lit a firework and shot it up in the sky. Eventually going to, what I think is going to happen is you're going to get all these cracklings and all these cracklings and the stars are gradually going to lose energy to the system. The system will become homogenous right. and static. What's going to be interesting is to see the structure all of these stars make after the crackle is done. Like, like is it going to make some kind of a geometric shape over all of space? that looks like something because think about it if you throw if you have something invisible and you can't see it and you, you throw, steel, throw, throw a, tennis balls at it well, like, or throw a blanket over it all right you'll see the form so maybe where what if there are finite dimensions to our space and it actually isn't yeah like that, then we would get to thing. see the the shape of the shape of uh, the universe yeah. of, 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 of everything i think there is a theory about that and it looks like a tree uh-huh you know, a tree and then this huge galactic stem. I think I was reading about yeah, that. Yeah, obviously that shape would probably evolve over time in, in a tree-like way. Very fitting. I wonder where the seeds go. I don't like homogeneity. Homogenous systems are boring. Homogenous systems are bullshit. They are, Who dude. would want to be a homogenous system? That's fucking bullshit, man. Variety mm. is, the, is, is, is the bee's knees. It's the bee's knees. It is. You just cut off the bee's knees, powder them, and then put them up in your potion. That's why I can't understand these motherfuckers that live around here that don't... Don't... Understand... Understand... Culture. Culture. Why would you want to be surrounded by the same shit for your whole life? Having a conversation with some Chinese international students, international Chinese students, yesterday was one of the most pleasurable experiences I've had since I came to college, people are so resistive. Are you still recording? Because I got some shit to say. Okay, say it. All right. People are so resistive to change that it almost sickens me. Like these motherfuckers that walk around and say, I don't want to have to press one for English. What the fuck are you talking about? Did you ever happen to think... Yes, it may be an inconvenience for you, but did you ever happen to think about where this comes from? And it would be an inverted, it's fucked up looking, but it looks cool. It's called a tesseract shadow. Because nobody can really tell you what a tesseract looks like because it's a four dimensional sphere, or a four dimensional cube. Of course I can. Well, know. there's nice, you can, if you rotate it constantly, it can make sense. I think. If you were only if you're rotating it constantly, right. but yeah. See, most people have trouble with three dimensions. We like to fuck around in four. Well, three nice. dimensions don't make sense either unless you're rotating it. Yeah. That's how you see the three dimensions. Because you only have two eyes. Yeah. One eye would give you a two-dimensional view, and then the second one allows you to see rotation through parallax. Is that the right word? Maybe. Yes, parallax is the exact yeah. right word. Yes. You should be a physicist. I should. Unfortunately, I'm going into brain science. Yes, unfortunately. You're going into the, the little stuff. No, physicists, I think physicists really... You like, should be a brain physicist. That's what you are, Mac. Yeah, You're I'm, a brain that's, physicist. That's what I want to do. That Mac, be, that would be the, the most, brain physicist. The most badass ever. Like, oh, hi, I'm a brain physicist. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> You're funny. No, that's fucking great. I would love to walk up to somebody and they ask, well, what do you do? I'm a brain physicist. That, that line gets people laid, I'm sure. In, I don't know what world. Not any I've been to yet, apparently. I wouldn't want to have sex with a woman who wouldn't want to have sex with a brain physicist. I know, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, none of them do. I'm sure they're funny I, no, out there. No, I'll find them. Yeah, I'm sure they're funny out there. They're not, uh, 
they're less common probabilistically. Oh uh, yeah, well yeah. I mean, look at us. We're kids. We're one in what? I mean, think about it. Addition was like, okay, we're badass. We're humans. We got addition. All right. Then multiplication is like, whoa, hold the phone, son. We can now do this even faster. We're just adding up a bunch of faster. And then we get exponentiation. And we're like, son, let me show you some shit. I can multiply multiplication. All right. And then integrals came along. And Newton was like, calm down, bitches. I got this. Watch this. And he sums up all the exponentials. That's why you get R3 number three. <laughs> ah! All right, this, is, this, is what, this is what I'm doing. Like here, I'm doing this. And imagine this was a semicircle. Imagine the I'm square doing, was a semicircle. Yeah, I'm squaring the circle. <laughs> the all right. That's what I did. Uh -huh. What you're doing is this. Same thing. You just change your axis of rotation. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, you're always doing it again. I wonder if they teach it like that. Because I can see where that would be useful if you were doing four-dimensional shit. And I've never done no four-dimensional integral. Because I used to be a very shallow person before I met, I mean, even met you, you know? Uh, and, and my personal journey has been one of optimism and growth. Um, I, I want to get the most fulfilling life, whether that's academically, it's academically, academically emotionally, and physically. And uh, maybe I just long to connect with other humans. And maybe, maybe I felt that, you, that, that connection. I mean, she felt the connection too, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, she cried. Like there were, there were, there were tears, like not crying, crying, but like there were tears that came down her face as we made love. But um, I don't, uh, I don't, know what that means for her um i don't know how to interpret it the situation is complicated but for the first time in my life i felt closer to any human than i ever have and i was in a relationship for four years and i never came that close to another human and that could be a sign of me changing not other people. Yeah? Um, Sounds good, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give you the most honest answers. Like, yeah, that's, this is, that's exactly uh, what I want. Deep pulled out of my brain. Because you, well, pulled, pulled from the depths of my feeling because I, uh, you're a friend that, that I feel I can be most completely honest with. You'd make a good shrink. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Love to me, love is a strive for union, a strive, for, a strive for unity, a strive to become the same in all things and experience things together. And some people want to do this separately. I, 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 wouldn't, I would say two people could love each other very much without becoming one entity, but I'm, I would say that the people that truly, truly really love each other want to be a whole that is greater than the sum of its broken parts like they would combine and not just be a sum of those two people it would be a sum that is actually a little bit greater there's some unique intangible thing that the mathematics wouldn't, wouldn't give you like adding one and one just two but there's something there. And I think that's what, I think that, I call that God. That, that essence that there would be by combining two people into one and it being more than just those two people, I'd say that is something that, is, that permeates all of space. And we're, and we're, we're getting to the point where we can, we can do that. And I, I think that I think I would call that God. That that intrinsic wanting to be one with something else in the universe. And eventually we all will be. We're going to do this whether we like it or not. The universe is slowly becoming one entity. The universe is built. The universe is 
love. love. Love is an intrinsic property of the universe, in my opinion. I think I think I could I could make a correlation between love and it being an intrinsic property of life. Complex enough life will love, and love gets amplified the closer complex entities get to each other. And eventually, when you can converge two complex entities together, that is the ultimate feeling of love. There's no definition for love after that. The scales of emotion would break down. Scales of emotion wouldn't mean anything. There would be a higher level of existence that can't be described at that point by our puny three-dimensional thinking minds.